Hello guys, I'm the Practical Doctor and this is my first YouTube video so please bear with me throughout the video. I have tried to make the video precise and short, okay. On this channel, uh, we can go through the series of cases, okay, like the most common cases which we usually encounter during the daily OPD or in the emergency, okay. So here in this video, we won't be going through the theory, okay, which you can study from the books as usual, okay. And there are a lot of other videos that are present on the YouTube, so you can go watch that. So on this video, we'll be going through, like, when a patient comes in, how you're going to approach the patient and what investigations you're going to order for that particular case and what treatment you're supposed to write, okay. So I'll be basically focusing on the key points here okay for the rest of the video you won't be seeing my face or you're gonna get distracted so let's go through the video so the increased incidence of uti is more common in women why okay <laughs> that's the big question so the female urethra is less than five centimeter compared to the male which is more than 15 centimeter that makes fe female more prone to getting urinary tract infections compared to men Let's go together through this case. Okay, a 32 year old woman came to the clinic, okay, with burning sensation while passing urine. Her vitals were stable, there were, there were no similar past history, and she was otherwise fit and well. I started my approach by taking the history, okay, then do the physical exam, then do the bedside investigation, investigations, and at last, treatment prescri prescription. So guys, let's go through the approach here. Okay, so these are some few important points which I would not like you to miss while taking the history uh, in a suspected case of UTI. So we'll be first exploring the burning pain. We'll be checking if the patient is having any hesitancy, increased urination, nocturia, or any kind of bleeding. We'll be checking for fever, chills, and flank pain, which is usually present in pyelonephritis, which we need to check, sort that out first. We're gonna check for any kind of tiredness that's present. Then we're going to check for any previous history of renal stones or any similar complaints in the past just to make sure that whether this is recurrent or not. Then we're going to ask for the sexual history. But uh, we, we you should never miss the 5P approach, which I'm going to tell you. Okay, period, pill, partner, pregnancy, and pep test. So these are the 5P which you must never miss in a female okay. patient. So in the physical exam, we'll be checking for any kind of rise of temperature. We'll be doing the abdominal examination complete and we'll be checking specifically for abdominal tenderness or any fullness, suprapubic tenderness or suprapubic fullness. So we're going to check for that. Then we're going to do the pelvic exam. In the pelvic exam on the outer, on inspection, we're going to look for any kind of lesions that are present or not. Then after that, we'll be doing the speculum exam in the speculum exam we'll be looking for any kind of uh, lesion and after that we'll be doing the bimanual examination especially we'll be checking for cervical motion tenderness and adenexal mass or tenderness so the bedside investigation that we're going to do is the urine dipstick analysis to look for any nitrites that are positive or not and especially we're also checking for any microscopic hematuria so let's go through the gold standard in test, okay, which is MCS, microscopic culture sensitivity of the midstream urine. And on the result, you're gonna look for any col colony forming bacteria per ml, which if it's more than 10 is to five, which is one lakh, then the test is positive. And 95% of the time, it's just E. coli. So this is the main focus part, okay. So the treatment prescription what's gonna be there in the prescription so so first of all we'll start by trimetoprim which we can we can prescribe for 300 milligram orally at night for three days or cephalexin okay 500 milligram orally BD for five days but the main part is the adjuvant therapy which we're gonna give along with that we're gonna advise the patient that use the urine alkalizer okay till the treatment is going on and use sufficient fluid intake at least two liters per day advice for good hygiene postcoital voiding anterior to posterior wiping and loose cotton underwear along with that we're going to give some food advice as well which is cranberry juice optimum dose has not been established yet 
and lactobacillus probiotic yogurt which will restore the flora yeah so these are some other antibiotics which you can have a look at it okay prescribing these are not wrong as well okay but they are prescribed once the primary treatment has failed okay so which includes phosphomycin amoxicillin clavulinic acid nitrofurantoin and fluoroquinolones if the resistance has been documented in or in presence of pseudomonas aeruginosa then you're going to prescribe that so this is when we're going to send the patient for referral if the microscopic hematuria still persists after the resolution of utr then the patient should be referred to the urologist for further workup hey guys i'm back and i hope you like the video and thank you for the support and please do the following